Uh, this project is the, the first, uh, first of the company's uh, offshore wind projects and this will stand ourselves and the company in uh, good stead for going forward for the large offshore wind pro projects we have planned for the future. Offshore industry in the UK is, is almost, you could say, still in its infancy. So we have to learn where we can and how we can. The key challenge with any offshore wind farm is the weather itself. The conditions of the sea, the time, the small windows that we have to work in, the fact that there's a lot of work at height, the fact that we're working in a different environment which can change within hours. Hartlepool Channel um, is, um, is exposed to the weather, so the weather does play a factor for ships going, going in and out of there. I'm actually a local guy, I'm born and bred in Middlesbrough, I've been here most of my life. Teesside's foundations are built on heavy engineering and making a living from the sea and, and, and I, think, I think people appreciate that. At the start of the railways, they were born here in 1825. Uh, the global steel industry was founded here in 1850 and I think moving into the offshore wind industry is a, a very natural uh, progression. Essentially EDF Energy Renewables has looked to recruit as many local businesses as possible into the wind farm uh, to ensure that everybody benefits from this fantastic project. We carried out a very comprehensive um, environmental impact assessment which looks at all, all of the factors, the, the local economy, the socio-economic bits and pieces, the impact on the, on the wave on the wind farm from a marine perspective, from a visual perspective and we spent a great deal of time and effort in, in trying to get that as right as we possibly could. It looks like a very easy to manage and build site. It's very close to the shore. Um, we've got lots of ports and, and the logistics around here are excellent. But that actually is deceiving because the, the nearest, nearness to the shore has actually got its own challenges. We have a physical constraint around here of the shipping, the, the, the river harbour, the traffic, etc. So it's a very tight, very constrained site. So to pull all that together, is excellent. We quite quickly developed a very good bond and a good common understanding of what the capabilities of the ships were and what the limitations of the port were. Hartlepool normally um, has site inductions of about 350 people a year, contractors and third party staff on site. During this project there were over 3,000, 3,500 even site inductions. I was there and witnessed the first rotor, rotor lifts and um, and, and handling those and controlling those was quite difficult. The jack-up vessels um, have these big legs on them um, and we discovered quite quickly that they punch holes in your harbour floor um, and it was determined very early in the project that what we'd have to do is dredge out some two metre deep pockets and we'd backfill them um, with, with armour stone um, to create these protected blankets for the jack-ups. That's one of the things that's been brought home to me since um, the project's been completed is how many people are beating their way to our door um, to find out how we put the rock blanket in, how deep it was, how it performed. The, the, the sea conditions in the Tees Bay are such that uh, if the foundations weren't protected um, they could become uh, eroded. We used quite a, took quite an uh, innovative approach to scour protection. So the monopiles basically stick into the, into the seabed and there's a phenomenon called scour which basically develops a, a sort of aperture around the, the foundation. We've got to fill those scour holes with material and usually you'd use just rock dumping but we actually filled, filled uh, large bags with, with smaller rocks. They are uh, placed very accurately using uh, specialist construction vessels and uh, very accurate uh, imaging technology. And again, what that actually does is it makes uh, ecosystems down there, so it, it brings the fish and it does help. It helps a lot. It's going to bring a lot of wildlife into the area. Being a multinational team and on site, the guys have come together and, uh, and worked really hard to, to get this thing built. From the start of the project itself, it's been one of the better jobs I've done in my whole career, I must admit. Um, it's been a nice place to work and there's been a lot of nice people to work with. Very good dialogue that went on, as I said, particularly between um, ourselves, the pilots, the, the masters of the, of the adventure, um, but also EDF and, and the wider, the, the contractors that were involved. I think honesty, cooperation and, uh, and good hard work has really helped bring this project home and uh, made a real success of it. I think the, the successful part with uh, the teams working together is that mutual respect. And right from sort of office staff to skippers on vessels, you know, 
with some really good people on the project. Quite honestly, without that level of teamwork, you can't make a successful build of these operations there. It's, this is a fantastic achievement for EDF Energy Renewables. It's its first offshore wind farm in the UK. It's great for a company of Xerox size to see this project finished and our name associated with it. You know, MSS are a local company, we employ local people, and there's an enormous amount of pride in delivering a project of this scale in your own backyard. It gives you a good feeling to feel that you played a small part in, in achieving it. I've got to know these lads, like you know, the lads that I work with really well, and I'll be sorry to say goodbye to them. It's been a huge achievement by, by everybody. I'm, I'm really, really proud to be being part of this process.